of the District of Chetwin at 434. Uh, do you want to read the opening statement, uh, Deanne or Carol? I got it. Perfect. In our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Deanne. <clears throat> Adoption of the agenda and that the council meeting be, held, be conducted electronically via Zoom due to the prevalence of COVID-19 and the pro province provincial state of emergency. So I believe that's been updated. Uh, Carol, if you don't mind to jump in right there, uh, has uh, it been updated? Um, it's been updated so that the province has asked all municipalities to have um, virtual meetings like we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah but we've uh, always uh, continued that after, right? It was the option or it wasn't uh, mandated by the province, but this is now? Right. It is, okay. yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so I would make that motion then to adopt the agenda in accordance to uh, the provincial state of emergency with the addition of a new item, um, RA3. Okay, <clears throat> library advisory board, RA3. I'll second that. Okay. Is there all those? In the, oh, uh, is there any more uh, new items that we need to add to our uh, agenda? Not seeing any. Adoption of the agenda with the new item. All those in favor? Gary. Okay, minutes. Uh, from the regular council meeting held on November 16th, 2020. So moved. Second, Clay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so any discussion or any omissions from, uh, on the minutes from uh, November 16th? Okay, not seeing any. All those in favor? Very. All right, we'll move on to delegations. Uh, Kelly McTaggart, uh, Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. Kelly. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, albeit virtually, it's nice to see everybody. I'm just going to share my screen here. Perfect. Okay, so you should be able to see this and I'll jump right into it. So uh, knowing that I have a, a time restriction, I'll, I'll try and kind of keep this short and concise. I, I do do annual council meetings and Chetwind is, um, you know, an area that I do do annually, but given COVID-19, things have been a little bit crazy in terms of scheduling. So it's a little bit later in the year than usual, but might actually be quite timely um, given that we can kind of do a year in review uh, for industry. So uh, very quickly, uh, just a recap on who CAP um, is. We're the largest industry association in Canada and we have offices coast to coast. So our main office is in Calgary, but we do also have a office in Victoria and an and, and office in Vancouver as well. Um, and we, our producers represent about 80% of the natural gas and oil that's produced in Canada. So the vast majority and we also have a number of associate members as well. And, and this space, um, which is a little bit more relevant to, to your area are the pipeline companies. So um, all the majors, Enbridge, uh, TC, et cetera. So going back to the beginning of, of the year, um, you know, in January, we were having a fairly positive um, forecast for 2020 in terms of capital investment coming um, you know, from within Canada, but also in terms of international investment as well. 
Uh, and then fast forward to March, where we kind of got into a lockdown situation, we really were in a position where we didn't know what we didn't know. I think that's the big difference between um, March versus now, where we're going into phase two of lockdowns. And I think now the markets are a little bit more resilient because of that. Um, but to go back to March, these were kind of the three key uh, policy areas that we were looking at. So we were looking at essential service um, and the oil and gas industry as an essential service and really ensuring that we um, continued to provide energy to the country and also um, continuing to provide employment, which is quite relevant to your area and to BC given the amount of pipeline projects happening right now in the province. Um, secondly, liquidity and job preservation. So, you know, job preservation plays into the first bullet a bit, but really looking at liquidity and big access to capital for producers and for the energy sector. So, um, you know, a good example of this was the LEAF program that came online in the, in the summer, the spring summer. Um, and we needed liquidity and capital in big sums of money. So the LEAF program, which was the large uh, employment kind of bucket, which was the last of the federal government to roll out, they were really looking at $300 million thresholds for these for these companies. And it wasn't just for the energy sector, it was also for um, you know, the airline industry and manufacturing and some of the bigger industries in Canada. And one interesting piece about that is, is that we haven't seen Canadian companies access these, um, these uh, paths to capital the way that we've seen them access in the United States. And the point that I, I try and make here is, is that we are actually in a much more nimble position than our Southern counterparts. Um, you know, we've seen massive accesses to capital from Wall Street um, of up to $100 billion from producers in the United States. Um, but we're in a little bit more of a nimble position because of the downturn in 2015. And then lastly, the third bucket that we've been looking at is regulatory efficiency. So doing no harm and streamlining regulations where we can, which is an ongoing uh, goal for industry in Canada, um, but really taking the opportunity during um, this pandemic to, uh, you know, to streamline things where we can to uh, keep employment and all these other priorities that we've been looking at. So the economic outlook, I, I did kind of want to reframe, uh, you know, the sector's contribution to Canada as a whole. I think, you know, oftentimes in Western Canada, especially, we have a lot of focus on oil and gas in British Columbia. We have quite a bit of focus of, on it, of course, in Alberta, um, but it falls a little bit flat in other areas of the, of the country. And I think that this has really been a good opportunity to show, um, you know, what the industry contributes to Canada as a whole. So we are the, the single largest private investor in Canada, uh, and we contribute 6.1% of um, Canada's G GDP, so very significant. Uh, and moving into kind of the economic forecast piece, we had $81 billion worth of capital expenditure in Canada in 2014. Uh, we were looking at a $34 billion estimate uh, for, for 2020, which was actually up from 2019. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just going to fast forward here. Um, the, the reality is, is that we're looking at more of a 20 to $24 billion spend this year. So very drastic um, decline in terms of our, of, in terms of our revenues. Also, we've announced about 100 or 800,000 um, barrels a day cuts, which is market driven. And a big part of this also is storage issues that we've seen um, throughout the past year. Uh, you know, OPEC countries have continued to produce uh, instead of easing off. And so we've, we've ended up being in you know, situations where the global storage situation is quite dire. And that's why we've really seen um, not so much in the last few months, but most definitely in the spring, big declines um, at the pumps in terms of price, which puts uh, us in the United States in, in not a very good um, market situation. So very quickly, I always share this infographic, but this is the most recent outlook. Uh, so basically what this infographic shows is that uh, if we are to meet our Paris Climate Agreement commitments, this 
is currently what the, the global energy mix looks like from 2018 to 2040. So the green column here is, you know, represents a 400% increase in renewables. So we are seeing massive growth in the renewable sector. It's very important. Um, but a, you know, one thing I really like to highlight is the biggest growth that we're seeing is actually in the natural gas space, uh, which is very pertinent to your neck of the woods and to Northeastern BC as a whole. And very importantly, 70% of the wells in Canada right now are actually natural gas wells. So um, this is really a, a huge growth space, especially uh, in the liquid natural gas space. So to kind of put this, uh, to put COVID-19 further into perspective, this is actually a Scotiabank figure, but I think it's pretty effective in telling the story. Uh, in terms of total primary energy demand, we're, we're set to see it drop by 6% in 2020. And this is the largest relative decline in 70 years and the biggest ever decline in, in absolute terms. So compared to some major crises that we've seen throughout the last century, we've actually never seen uh, you know, a global energy uh, drop the way that we've seen it during the past year. I'll just skip past this one. Uh, very quickly, this is uh, the drilling forecast for, for 2020 and also for 2021. Uh, these numbers are um, have, have actually been rejigged in the past couple of months, so they're quite up to date. Uh, so for 2020, our estimate for British Columbia is still looking at about 324, and I think we're actually going to fall closer to uh, 330 by the end of the year. So as you can see, you know, we've really fallen off since 2019, but we're going to see things pick up again in 2021. And one good news story is, is that gas is actually looking doing quite well. Um, for the first time in three years, we actually saw gas prices stay above um, zero in the summer months, which is, is a very good sign. But we're also forecasted to see the gas price hover around $3 in the winter. So this is higher than we've seen in the, the past few years. So um, again, the gas story kind of seems to be where the industry is going and where producers want to be right now. So that's a, that's a good thing for Northeastern BC. I did want to give kind of the bigger picture. I like this because it goes back to 2000. Um, but, you know, this just reiterates that our original forecast for this year was actually above um, uh, 2019. So despite some, some hurdles, you know, we've seen major pipelines move forward this year. And I think that's given producers some confidence. So we were going to see an uptick um, in production. But unfortunately, that's um, fallen a bit flat because of COVID-19. So in terms of our recovery priorities, so we're, we're really changing gears and have started to look at economic recovery in a very big way in the last couple of months. Um, for the speech for the, from the throne, we put forward four key pillars uh, to the federal government. And I will say that typically how CAP works is, is that we, we really look at oil and gas from a jurisdiction point of view. So we work very closely with provincial governments it's been a very different year this year. A lot of our government relations because of COVID-19 and also kind of this broader look at our economic situation has led us to deal much more with the federal government. Um, so that being said, these were, you know, the four pillars that we put forward, creating and retaining good jobs in Canada, generating pan-Canadian benefits and prosperity for Indigenous communities, advancing environmental leadership uh, and building wealth and a value while shrinking Canada's debt. And this last point, you know, really focusing on building our export economy, we've seen a, a huge increase in our GDP to debt ratio. It's a, about 45% right now in Canada. And so looking at industry as a way to provide um, energy abroad, but also using that um, to leverage uh, our GDP to debt ratio and, and sh shrinking our debt. Okay, so just very quickly, I wanted to add this because there has been a lot of um, talk, you know, at the provincial but also federal levels in comparing Canada to Norway. Uh, they've had major reform in terms of ta uh, taxation and also, um, you know, a few key points 
in terms of exploration, which I'll, I'll get to, but very briefly, it's very hard to compare Canada to other major producers because we have very different social and environmental standards, which is a good thing. But when it comes to kind of um, regulatory and tax reform, it's very hard to look elsewhere um, for a blueprint to do that. So Norway has actually stepped up um, to support their, their sector while also maintaining some of these broader environmental goals. And one of the ways that they've done it is they've they they've created tax incentive in the exploration space. And why this could be a, a really good thing for Canada and some of our Western basins is, is that we haven't seen major investment in our basins in about 10 years. Most of it's been in, in Texas and the Southern United States. So I just put this out there because, you know, when we think about other jurisdictions and kind of creating that competitive spirit in Canada, this would be um, one, one potential way to do that. And another way that, you know, the, the government is starting to pay more attention to Norway is, is because of our offshore development in Newfoundland. Okay, very quickly, I, I think I have a couple more slides to do, go. So I did want to include this CAPTA's third party polling um, a couple times a year. And I just wanted to highlight what was coming back from the Ipsos polling um, that we did a couple months ago. So on the right hand side here, these were the five top priorities from Canadians. And what's really interesting to me is, is that for the first time since I've been at CAP actually, we're not seeing uh, the environment and climate change be a top five priority. And that's not to say it's not important to Canadians. Of course, it, you know, it's one of our, our biggest priorities in Canada. But I, I do think it's interesting that most of the priorities fall under the economic recovery um, umbrella. On the, the very left hand side, the 61% is uh, represents broadly speaking, um, the overall support for industry in Canada and 61% is quite a bit higher than we've seen over the than in the past couple of years. So favorability for the industry is also um, is also increasing. Okay, so current issues. Just to wrap up, I've already talked um, quite a bit about these pipelines and construction, and as you know, because Chatwind is right in the middle of a few of them. But um, you know, one note on the pipelines is that somewhat ironically, we've had a lot of challenges with pipelines in Canada in the last decade. And during this pandemic, uh, all of them are actually in construction, which has ended up being a, a very good em employer um, in form of employment. In northeastern BC, you guys just uh, it just came out, but you have the second lowest uh, employment rate in the country, which is is really quite amazing. So my point being is is that it's actually quite timely, uh, and I think some of the favorability towards industry uh, has a lot to do with the employment that that these projects are providing. Uh, the U.S. election. So this was a big deal. I, you know, it was a few weeks ago and things have gone a little bit quiet already, but it is important for the Canadian industry. Um, you know, President-elect Joe Biden will create a more competitive environment for Canada. We'll see them rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. And we're gonna see a lot of methane regulations and GHG emission regulations come into play, which will be a good thing for Canada because it will make us more competitive. I think as you know, U.S. companies, uh, you know, innovate in that space to meet uh, these requirements. Uh, Canada is much further ahead in that space. So again, I, I think we will see a more competitive climate, which will be good for the Canadian industry. Uh, yeah. The last thing that I'll talk about, because I have talked about these uh, last two points, but the clean fuel standard uh, is a fuel standard that is uh, has been put forward by the federal government and we are starting to pay close, close attention to this. So with time in mind, I won't get into the details of this, but um, you know, this is going to start to become more of a policy issue, I think, in uh, come January, especially uh, once we get into the new year. Um, you know, some are calling it a carbon tax 2.0, although we have seen an increased carbon tax, uh, which was just announced um, this week. But all that being said, I did just want to flag this as a policy piece. And I think there'll be, uh, you know, quite a bit more consultation going on. And NCAP will most definitely circle back in the new year about that piece of policy. And I think I will leave that 
there. If there's any questions for me, I would be happy to answer. Any council members have any questions for uh, Kelly? Yep. I have one no? quick question. Um, Kelly, um, do you have a rough idea how long the uh, large presence of workers will be in town? A couple or three more years or four or two? Or... So I know that for, for CGL, so for the Coastal Gas Link project, I, you know, I can't speak on behalf of the project, but they're still, they're looking to have their first terminal online in 2024. And I, I do believe that they're still on schedule for that. So the pipeline portion, you know, I think it would be, my guess would be a couple more years. And I think because Chetwin's such a good centrally located hub in Northeastern BC to access the, into the Pine Pass, um, you know, I'm sure that there'll be uh, workers there or in that area continuing to, to use your services for quite some time. Um, but then, of course, there's also other other projects going on, which I'm not totally um, in the know on on all the pipeline pieces, just because they're not kind of our main business. We focus more on producers. But um, from what I can see, Chetwind is is a busy place right now. And I think we'll continue to be for quite some time. I think you're going to continue to see uh, growth and production for, sh you know, throughout Northeastern BC. Thank you. Any uh, questions for Kelly? I just had a comment. Um, Kelly, when you went, we're, we're talking about the uh, priorities from the speech uh, from the throne that economic recovery was their number one, but mm -hmm. carbon emissions and everything like that, is that what you said that was not on their priority? So Love those it. are the top ranked for from the Canadian public. So as I said, you know, climate, climate and well, climate change in the environment kind of, uh, you know, have always in the past few years been ranked in the top five. Healthcare is always number one or two. And then education is usually top five as well, which wasn't in our latest uh, polling. So as I said, you know, it's not necessarily because they're not important to Canadians. I think just the, the urgent matter of uh, job preservation and job creation um, is, is more pressing to people. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Council, I have one, uh, you said the, was it the Northeast here that we were number two? Who was the number one region? You know what, that's a, that's a great <laughs> question. All the articles that I've been reading have been focusing yep. uh, mostly on, on Northeast BC and the projects going on. So I'm not sure I can circle back. I would think that it's uh, another British Columbian community, to be honest. Economically, BC is doing very well. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be my guess, is that it's within your province. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, Kelly, uh, some of the stuff that we talk about and uh, around the community and surrounding areas, the footprint that uh, uh, natural gas and the oil uh, pipelines uh, have on our community and uh, surrounding area, right up to the coast, right? So we, we feel very strongly about uh, them leaving their footprint, plus leaving their, uh, they talk about legacy. So do you hear that in uh, through your organization of what they think is necessary for them to leave uh, not only a, a footprint in the geography, but in the footprint of uh, saying the sustainability of, of a community like Chetwin and Hudson Hope and Dawson Creek, Tumbler, whatever, wherever they have a pipeline right through the, to the coast. Because I know uh, in our uh, dealings with uh, some of the organizations there, uh, right now it's Coastal Gas Link. They always tell us that, uh, or, mention or bring it up or whatever you we feel that's necessary is always a legacy and uh, part of the legacy i just tell them that uh, we have legacy here uh, we we don't need that well i guess we do need funds that come in but we need a something that is to brought up so that we can say 30 years from now that yes uh, i don't know how the lifespan of a pipeline but i'm thinking it is quite long you know, uh, 40 years, 20 years, whatever it is, whatever it is, as uh, long as uh, there's uh, gas and oil in the ground, I guess that pipeline's 
would uh, mm -hmm. still be operational. But uh, when we, when I'm talking to some of the gas, uh, well, coastal gas link mainly and TC Energy, is that they, they talk about legacy. So uh, that I'm just bringing this up to you because I'm not sure if you've uh, heard of any of their legacies or of what they're bringing to us. And uh, when you have $24 billion, that's a lot of money in anybody's coffers. And then you look at uh, the estimated 34 billion, just because of COVID, uh, you, you dropped quite a few uh, billion dollars uh, drop. Yeah, we, we talked like that, like a bank. But to say that, to leave something in the area rather than just a pipeline and a, and a hole in the ground to, to us as community members and surrounding area. Have you heard anything of them giving us major infrastructure help or capital for any of those projects? Because we have some here in Chetwin and I'm sure other communities have that. So I just leave that with you because uh, when uh, you do talk to these, uh, your, uh, the group that this is a concern that Chetwin has, uh, the mayor of Chetwin has that if they're leaving a legacy, we need a legacy, not, not uh, some stuff that let's say we, I, I always say, oh, uh, dishwasher, you know, for purposes of dollars and cents. So, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. We, we all accept that because the community, small communities do need stuff like that. But for the long run, like 30, 40 years, you know, we were looking for a major uh, capital investment or something that for an infrastructure to be as a legacy. So mm -hmm. uh, just drop that on your lap and uh, you can put that in paper writing and do whatever you need with it. Because uh, as a mayor, I, I will be pursuing some of that and hopefully with council's assistance, we will move in that direction. But uh, when they say legacy, I, I believe legacy meaning meaningful uh, stuff that comes to Chetwin and the future. Most definitely, yep. And I would say to that, you know, um, that you, we could talk about that all evening, but I think one of the best approaches to take with that is to have clear objectives in mind when you're going to companies, whether they're producers or pipeline companies. And, and yeah, don't start with an open-ended question. That's been my experience in working in-house for companies as well. I think it's really important to know what you want and uh, have a, you know, illustrate what the path there is to get there. That's, yeah, as I said, been my experience in that space. Thank you, Kelly. Is there any more questions? Thanks, Kelly. Thank you for uh, your report, Kelly. I believe we were uh, quite informed. Thank you very much for all the information. And uh, we will see you again. Uh, is it 2021? 2021. Your annual, annual report. Yes, I'll be back and, and have a happy holidays to everyone. Yes, and stay as Bonnie Henry, right? Stay calm, wash your hands. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks again. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Oh, where are we? <clears throat> Okay, uh, let's get back to business here. We will on to bylaws. B1, District of, uh, District of Chetland Solid Waste Collection and Disposal, Disposal of Service Amendment Bylaw number 1125-2020 requires adoption. I would make that motion to adopt. I'll second that. All right. <clears throat> Any discussion? Well, I'm seeing any. All those in favor? Okay. B2, District of Chetland, Water Fees, Charges and uh, Regulation Amendment Bylaw number 1126 2020 requires adoption. I'll make that motion. Mel? Second. And Clay? Second. 
Any discussion? Okay, Dr. Nenny, all those in favor? Thank you, Gary. B3, uh, District of Chetland Sewer Fees and charge, Charges Amendment Bylaw Number 1127-2020 requires rescinding of the third reading and be given a third reading as amended. I believe we had an error in, uh, in the date. Carol? Yes. Oh, just okay, trying to unmute myself. Correct. Yes, that's correct. One date was um, incorrect, so that's been corrected in this amended version. Okay, we need to rescind. So okay. we, yeah, we need third reading rescinded, and that third reading, third reading be given as amended. I would make that motion. I'll second that. You're muted, Mr. Mayor. Third reading as amended. Anybody make that motion? We need that motion for the third reading as amended. So I made the motion, yes. And Councillor Weisgerber seconded that uh, amendment. So we voted on that? Not quite. Not yet. Let's vote on that, okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> All those in favor, carried. Okay, make the motion of the District of Chetland sewer fee charges number 1127-2020 as amended. Right, Carol? Um, 1127, that's correct. Third reading as amended. Okay. Need a motion? Oh, oh, sorry, that was the one that we just did. Um, we're on B4 now. Oh, so everything's good with there because as amended? Okay, as correct. Amended, yeah. Okay, let's go to B4 then. We're done with B3. Okay, District of Chetland Revenue uh, Anticipation Bylaw number 1128-2020 requires first, second, and third reading. I'll make that. Mel? Sorry. Okay. Mel and Laura, second? You bet. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? Gary. All right, community reports. Uh, I will uh, do a little bit on our PRD, uh, a little bit on the connectivity uh, we had uh, we had uh, committee structs to uh, look into the connectivity uh, and report back to the PRRD. So right now we're in the pro we had our uh, discussion ourselves, uh, Kevin and myself are on that committee. So we uh, just uh, had a little bit of highlight of what we're uh, going to be involved with. Right now we're just collecting information and what it might cost uh, Chapman in the future. So once all that information comes down, we will have a report uh, from the PRD uh, or, or the committee to uh, present uh, to council. So in that being said, uh, with, with everything going down there and uh, it seems like it's going to be quite a task. So we're, we're hoping it gets done here in 2021. So that's, that's the goal, it's an ambitious goal but we are uh, certainly thinking that the PRD and uh, surrounding areas uh, will have the connectivity in place, hopefully by 2021, hopefully, uh, hopefully in the shovel in the ground and uh, try to get the last mile. It's the last mile where uh, we put up a tower and we have to get it out to, uh, let's say, uh, East Pine or Jackfish area where they don't have the connectivity. So hopefully we'll have something here in the next uh, little while for, for our council and for uh, all the other councils in, uh, in the area. Kevin, did you have anything to add to that uh, connectivity uh, meeting? No, I think you covered it fairly well. Okay. <clears throat> so did anybody else have any uh, reports, council? 
Okay. Quick Matt. one from the oh. regional district from the from the solid waste committee. Um, we're uh, going through our budget here. Uh, in a couple weeks or a couple of meetings next next month in January, beginning of January. Also, there's a uh, waste to energy. Uh, one of the first prototypes just rolled off the assembly line, and it's going to, it's not going to be coming to the Peace Region, but uh, it's going to be going to a landfill near you. So maybe we, maybe there is something in the future here. Technology. Uh, that's it. Yep. Yep. Is that technology? That's technology. Yep. <laughs> okay. So your worship, I just have an update. Yes, we have Rochelle. Okay, so on uh, December 3rd, I had my first uh, GoFund awesome. uh, meeting with the BC Hydro and it's the Generate Opportunities Fund. Um, Councillor Bazandowski sat on this prior to myself, so it's a two year term, so I'm pretty excited to be on it. So, and what it is, just for a little bit of a background, is in 2016, BC Hydro launched their uh, Generate Opportunities, their GoFund. Um, it's about an $800,000 fund to support uh, the Peace Region and nonprofit organizations. So the GoFund is distributed over an eight-year period, and we're just into our sixth year of an eight-year period, so there's two years left. Um, to provide services to vulnerable populations, including children, families, and seniors. And Jocelyn, I believe, must know what I'm talking about because the Chetwin Public Library has had funding from them. And it's a partnership between the Site C uh, GoFund and, of course, our Northern Development um, Initiative Trust people. And um, yeah, so we're just into our sixth year of our eight year um program and just over four hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars have been has been distributed out to 49 different projects in in the peace region so it's pretty amazing and i was really excited to see that so many of the um chetwind organizations the nonprofits, not everybody's successful all the time but you know a lot are uh so there has been a lot distributed in Chapman and I can just, you know, encourage people to go to the BC Hydro website or the, and be, you know, find out, you know, Google BC Hydro Go Fund and Northern Development Initiative Trust also has all that information on their website. So any nonprofit organization looking for funding to help build and sustain a program is, is available. So that's my update. Okay. Thank you, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. And any other? Okay. As uh, from the mayor, uh, I just got a, we just got information from Sereras Murphy. They usually donate some funds to uh, area. This year they couldn't really uh, get involved with anything because of COVID. So they did a 50-50 raffle in there uh, with their employees. And uh, they came up with six thousand dollars from a fifty-fifty raffle, with within their uh, ranks. So, and uh, they indicated that it was to be used for youth sports. So, just a shout out to Sereras Murphy. We will be uh, sending a letter of thank you from uh, Chetwin, and uh, how how they uh, participate in in raising funds doesn't matter if it was COVID or in the past they they were always here to support Chetwin in any any manner uh seniors and uh, now with the youth with this six thousand dollars that that's quite a fund uh, that they put out for for the youth uh sports so i'd just like to say uh thank you to them and we will uh put something out possibly in the coffee talk and uh, send a letter out to uh to them for that so, which is a great gesture on their behalf. And uh, for the past few years too, the, uh, they've been donating or raising funds for, uh, for the Chetwin seniors throughout the whole community. So uh, that is it. And is there administration? Uh, Carol, did we have anything? No. Okay. Uh, can, 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 I, can I just ask Carol maybe 
if, yes, if we yes. can have an update on the outdoor rink. Oh, okay, sure. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. So yeah, this has been happening just today. Am yeah. I on mute? No? Um, no, you're good. Oh, okay. So just today we've been communicating um, with the health authorities and well, uh, Desiree was contacting Northern Health to make sure that it was still okay to have our outdoor rink in light of the enhanced public health orders. And uh, so Desiree was sent an email saying, yeah, it's fine. So we're just going to put some signage up and the, the rink will be built. So our awesome. staff are excited to start putting the ice in. I think the citizens of Chatwin are excited that the ice is going in as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for that, Rochelle. Uh, is that it for questions for myself or Carol? Okay, good. Let's move on to uh, discussion item. Uh, email for the Peace River Regional District uh, dated December 2nd, 2020. Uh, TUP uh, is 20004TUP, uh, Gay's referral. Okay, so. This here is just a question that the PRD will uh, give us and uh, asking, uh, I guess, neighbors for any uh, information or if they had any concerns. So one of the concerns that uh, we were looking at in this was uh, the fencing and the uh, berm. So we were looking at that part uh, because in the summer it was dust. We uh, had uh, a few complaints from 53rd. I believe, uh, Carol, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So uh, with this and PRD, Dan Rose, uh, director would uh, like some information uh, from us as uh, neighbors to that uh, adjacent property to uh, give us or to let him know what our concerns are. So that was a couple of identified uh, items that we looked at, Carol, myself, and Dan, I talked to Dan, uh, and he was thinking that maybe we should be thinking about a higher berm and uh, ourselves here in town, maybe thinking of a, a, a fence, not a six foot, but a 10 foot fence, something that's a little bit higher. And uh, we were talking maybe just like maybe a right away where we could plant vegetation, making sure that uh, we collect uh, more of the dust in that 50, between 53rd and uh, their uh, their property. But that is something I believe that Dan Rose should be looking at, not Chetland, right? Mm -hmm. This is a RRD thing. But we can suggest that. And when he asked, asking what we think, this is where, where we can, as a council, uh, say this is our concerns. Is I there anything on, the, on our part there, Carol, on the administration part that we looked at, Desiree? Or Carol? Yeah, so uh, I was speaking with Director Rose this morning as well on, on this issue. And so he suggested council might want to um, say that they would, the recommendation that uh, is in the report before you, that uh, council might want to add that the screening be placed along the whole length of the property on 53rd Avenue, because that's where um, the neighbors have been so concerned about dust, um, garbage blowing around, noise, and that sort of thing. So screening and buffering would probably really help those neighbors there. I have a question on that. What does screening look like? Is, that, is there a difference between a fence, a chain link, and screening? Yes, um, and so there's, a, there's an attachment from the PRD uh, zoning bylaw where it describes screening and it includes both vegetative screening and a wooden fence. But it, the wooden fence is defined as um, three, or I think it's a six feet. And as uh, Mayor Coutre mentioned, um, it might be better to have a higher fence so that it contains more of the dust and garbage and uh, provides more of a buffer from the noise. Well, comments or can we? Uh, 
uh, we'll go to Mel and then uh, Jocelyn. You're on mute, Mel. Sorry about that. So now is this, are we talking about a, a fence on 43rd Street or are we talking about the property they're asking to use as a lay down yard? They're already using it as lay down. Yeah. So the property on along 53rd is already being used. Uh, that piece of property, part of it is, is um, subject to this TUP and part of it has already been rezoned as light industrial. But Director Rose suggested that we could recommend a fence to buffer that entire strip um, in return for Council's um, subjective approval of this TUP. Okay. That's Jocelyn? Uh, <clears throat> I drive that every day. And I know that this isn't our concern, but that intersection turning onto the Tumblr Highway. So if you're going up the hill, turning right to the Tumblr Highway, and then you could turn left to go in down into their laydown. Every day there is just about an accident in that intersection. They need uh, stoplights, the uh, turning lane, something. I don't know. And same as when you're coming down to go into the car wash and then into the Legion. Well, you get somebody that's coming up from town who is in the right lane to go up the hill, but somebody's going to pass them, and then all of a sudden they slam on the brakes and they turn left to go into the car wash, and people coming up behind them. Like that, that intersection is really dicey too, and it's getting a lot of traffic. Yes, uh... Director Rose and myself have talked about it's already a busy uh, area, so we will uh, probably discuss that. And that would be Modi, right? Uh, that would have to deal with something like that. But we we do deal with uh, Modi through the through the PRRD and uh, through our district here. So uh, that's a concern that uh, was brought up uh, through uh, Director Rose, and uh, we hadn't discussed it to the point of saying, well, we have to go directly to Modi with that. But that's a concern that we could bring up as council that's yeah. uh, noted that we will uh, bring that up. And uh, Rochelle. Yeah, so thank you, Jocelyn, for bringing that up for um, the accident zone. Um, I actually had to run up to um, the welding shop up Payless Welding. Uh, there was a vehicle, there was a log truck beside me as I was in the turning left lane and a vehicle, the, the log truck was turning to go up the Sekunka and a pickup truck just shot through and just about T-boned me as I was turning off. He didn't even know that I was there. So there is no control there. And it is, there's been more than one accident there, but thank you for bringing that up. That is a problem. Um, another concern is the dust from that. I, I, I think I would like if we're going to send something to the PRD is that they have to do dust control because I mean we we look at camper in the summertime and the dust that comes off of them it's and it's no different they they really do need to be up on their dust control and I, I believe it would be the responsibility this is not I don't think up to the district to worry about building the berm or some sort of vegetation because it's on regional district, although it's close to the, our, it's on our property line. And, and I'm not sure that I'm keen on a wooden fence. Um, some sort of a chain link fence would just, I think, look that much more, but I think those concerns absolutely do need to be addressed to the regional district for this. But definitely something with Modi for some sort of traffic and you know what and that was our concern with the rcmp people coming down that hill at 90 kilometers 100 kilometers an hour they're in a 50 kilometer an hour zone and and they're just and they're going up the hill at 100 kilometers an hour and yeah yep big concern there uh, rochelle for sure absolutely uh, but uh what uh prrd is asking is our uh, our concerns and uh, Director Rose mentioned uh, that, that we should bring our concerns forward. And uh, the berm, he recognizes that's uh, the applicant's uh, uh, 
a business, but that is PRD's business also. So mm -hmm. yes, it is a concern and uh, the chain, uh, the, the fencing, that's all uh, with uh, the applicant himself to deal with. So, and, but it is PRD that approves this stuff. So, you know, it's the PRD, but they're asking for our concerns. So the, we will bring these forward to uh, Director Rose, that council and, uh, and staff to uh, look at. Any more on, uh, on this matter? Do you want us to make this recommendation that's on here or? Yes, please. Um, and if, uh, if the person who makes the recommendation agrees with the fence being higher, that'd be great to include. And then also the, the piece about MOTI. Okay, I can make that recommendation. Uh, you'll have to fill me in on the height of the fence because that's not in this, but okay. the council authorized administration to advise the PRRD that it has no objections to the PRRD temporary use permit 2004 subject to the following conditions. That an effective dust amendment, abatement, whatever it's called, <laughs> program be implemented on the property. Is that where the higher fence it would be? Um, yeah, and to keep the dust down. So some kind of a dust abatement program, um, calcium or, or just keeping it wet. Okay, and uh, substance, substance, oh my God. Screening and landscaping be placed around the property to act as a buffer for neighboring properties to offset noise, dust, light pollution, and that the effective erosion and sediment control plan be implemented on the subject property. Okay, and then if we could just add something about MOTI and um, M MOTI be contacted about traffic control of some type. Correct. And we'll, we'll bring up uh, the safety factor, but MOT needs to be involved in our recommendation. I would second that. Okay. Any more discussion on this matter? I have a comment. Uh, go ahead. Uh, um, just the, the point B says that substantial screening or landscaping be placed around the property. Um, does that include the around the complete property? Landscaping, uh, I, I believe that's including the berm and the fence. So it's around the property. So we talked about the berm and we talked about, uh, about the chain link fence and the buffering zone. Okay, so it says around the properties. Does that mean from the highway, we're going to now see a fence instead of uh, the yard? No, I believe that's the berm, uh, Janet. There's already a berm there. And I believe it's 1.3 meters, but that uh, I believe is not high enough uh, according to Dan. So once we get this in there, then uh, the discussion will be uh, high. And if we put the 10 foot fence in, that means that we want him to put the 10 foot fence in. But I believe uh, the PRD will be uh, negotiating that. And if we put that in here, then that Dan will go and he says, this is the concern that Chapman has, right? By putting okay. in this. Thank you. Yeah. So I believe that, uh, do we have the 10 foot fence in there, uh, Carol, or do you need that before we? I think that um, we'll add that, um, correct, Laura? That was in your motion? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And Dan will deal with that uh, berm because it says landscaping, uh, Councillor work. And I will be involved in that, and so we will. Uh, we will take a good look at. Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, Carrie. <clears throat> Correspondence. I can make that motion to receive. Item C1 to C3. Second. Second by Clay. <clears throat> Any discussion? Good, okay, all those in favor? Carried. Uh, okay.
Ja, ook niet. Ze hebben iets anders. Information items. Uh, motion to receive um, I1 to I28. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion on that? Any items? Okay. All those in favor? Gary? Reports to action. RA1. Assessment sponsorship and naming rights policy. I would make that motion that council endorse the asset sponsorship and naming rights policy included with this report as attachment A. Second by second. Clay. Second by Clay. Any discussion? Yeah, I have one. Yes, Laura. So um, I think it's a great thing, but I, I'm, I, I have, I think I have a little bit of an issue with the uh, sponsorship levels about what mayor and council will be approving. Um, I think 25,000, I think it should be a little lower for mayor and council to approve. Like I'm thinking anything up 10 and over should be approved by mayor and council. Okay. Um, we can and being is because if anybody asks any questions about it, they phone mayor or council and ask us. And I think we either need to be in the know about what's going on or we need to make be the ones that make the approval on it. Sure, I'll make that change, no problem. That's just my opinion. I don't know what everyone else thinks, but. Everybody good with that? Any more discussion? I have one other comment. I just, our question more or less. Um, yep. What kind of agreement do they have at the tele with the Cottonwood right now? Because now it's Talisman Hall. So did we not have a policy in place when that was done up? Yes, there was one in place. It, it's very old. They're now reviewing and, and, and coming up with something new for that as well. But it was a, there was an expiry date on the naming policy. So after a certain number of years, it changed um, from Talisman to, I believe that's Cottonwood now, right? Cottonwood Hall. Oh, it's gone back to that now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. All right. So it's uh, been made. Any more discussion? So we're just changing the 25 to uh, 10, and that's the motion with the 10. Okay. Any more discussion? Good. All those in favor? Okay. RA2, uh, policy review. I would make that motion that council rescind the Chetland Library Maintenance Policy number 04000589. You're on mute, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, uh, second. So oh, do I step away for this for conflict of interest? Oh. Sorry. Carol? Probably a good idea, even though it's not de really dealing with dollars and cents, but if you wouldn't mind. We'll give her a few seconds. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Any more, dis any discussion on the council uh, for library maintenance policy? We we need a seconder first. Okay, right, because I was getting uh, Josh. Okay, we got, we've got Clay. Clay is a uh, second. Okay. Any discussion on the uh, maintenance policy for the library? Okay, we're good with that? Yeah, no, that's good. We're Going good? through these policies and getting them cleaned up. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Carried. Are you gonna phone her? Uh, oh, okay, Deanne's on. <laughs> Good. Carol's on it? There she is. Okay.
Okay, new item, right? We've got our, well, RA3. Is she so library advisory board? I would make that motion that um, counselor, um, that council appoint counselor work to the Chetwin Public Library Advisory Committee. Second by Laura. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Sorry, it was last minute, Janet. I was, I, I was invited to the meeting, but anyway. It's okay. all good. Done. Done. Okay. Thank you. So was there any other uh, new uh, business I hadn't written it down? Carol? I believe we're good. No new business, I don't think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Council, for all your efforts uh, all year and wish everyone. I got a lot of cards here. If you want to come get a Christmas card, I'll sign it. Doesn't matter if it's from Hudson Oak. I'll, you can, <laughs> I'll hang them up uh, in front of my office so that uh, we could all uh, have a look at them. And I'd like to thank you for the year for uh, being responsible citizens at Chapman and uh, keeping me straight up here on the chair, making sure that I uh, make my mistakes and you tell me about them. And uh, Laura just uh, got what I had here. Oh, she couldn't even say the word. It's, that's what I get. So uh, anyway, thanks, uh, Laura, for doing <laughs> I knew you. I know you're a great actor, actress. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank you all and uh, staff. Uh, it was a pleasure always. To work with uh, Carol and uh, Desiree. Welcome to to us here in Chetwin and uh, and uh, being part of the community. And uh, for everybody else, uh, we are also uh, uh, thankful that we got our families and uh, friends that, to uh, have the holidays, even though it's just by phone or uh, uh, what is, what is that called when you're looking at FaceTime? If you got an iPhone, right, and Zoom and whatever they got. So. Uh, have a Merry Christmas, everybody, and I enjoyed uh, the year, even though the COVID and uh, everything else uh, slammed us in the face and kicked our ass and uh, told, told us not to show our face in public unless you got a mask on, right? So anyway, thank you for that. And uh, Council, yeah, uh, once again, thank you. Thanks, so uh, any, anybody else got, got something to say? You, uh, here, here you go. I just want to wish everybody, all of our citizens and our wonderful community a wonderful, very Merry Christmas. And next year, 2021, I'm sure is going to look different. Hopefully it's going to look different. And, um, but you know what, we, we've come through 2020 and watch out 2021. If we can survive 2020, we can survive 2021. And it's not forever. So... No, it's it's been a good year. Joshua, I I would just like to say Merry Christmas. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Don't don't break the rules over Christmas. We want to see 2021 with faces being next to each other. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Get it. Happy holidays, everyone. Laura. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. Clay. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mel. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you very much. And Carol, did you want to say something? Yeah, for thanks. Thanks to Council and Mayor for a really wonderful year. And I think we've got a lot done and 2021 is going to be even better. So thanks to all of you. Hope you have a wonderful holiday. Yes. And uh, as Mayor, I'm going to uh, on the 17th. Uh, Chamber of Com Com Commerce luncheon. So uh, it'll be via Zoom and uh, I'll be there uh, discussing a little bit about our telling, telling everybody what a wonderful council we have. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, wash your hands, make sure you're safe, everybody. Wear your mask. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry